Hello and welcome back to the OGA Rainbow Six Pit Minor Quals for North America. I'm Sun, I'm joined once again by Demo as we get into our second map of this incredible series between Luminosity mm -hmm. Gaming yep. and Disrupt yep. Gaming as well. So, what do you think of that first map, Demo? Well, first map was... Oh, well, what can you say? Just... Oh. Go watch it. That's what you need to yeah. do. Go yeah, watch it if you true. haven't already. But how about we jump into Villa? We're in the Tuscany. Because that's our second map. Is it in Tuscany? It, it is. is. Tuscany. It is. Right. Don't question you my really, knowledge. You really know never, all the lore, don't you? Never question my knowledge of lore. Okay. Well, we're going to get into Villa here. This has been a pretty good map for Disrupt. And this is their map pick as well. So since it's their map pick, Luminosity gets to pick sides. And they've opted to go to... Defense first, as we'll see Capitao and Jackal again immediately bend off the board. Okay, so probably just comfort picks, but then again, Jackal They make sense is, as uh, well for Villa. Jackal, especially in this map specifically, because it is a lot more open and room favored, it, it makes a lot of sense to have that one. Capitao as well. Honestly, I'm a big fan of a hard preacher ban on Villa as well. I would like to see like a mm. Furmite being gone because it really limits then the attack even more so. And if you're disrupted and you start in the defense, if you get a 6-0, oh, oh, you know, that's you as heat up as you can. That's just dropped as demoralized as they are. That's what I would do anyway. So Mira and Maestro are removed off the board. Again, that is going to leave Echo up. So the exact same bands we had last time, except uh, without the Mira ban, no, uh, no Valk ban this time. So... I think, honestly, that mirror isn't amazing for Villa, so... But we have seen uh, good mi mirror usage come out from both teams so far, so... And yeah, it definitely does make sense. So we're going to go to Aviator Room and Games Room Defense, first of all, for Luminosity. I was exactly what they want to do with this. I like the Doc pick here, because there's no Maestro to use a Bulletproof Cam on 90 instead. And just to constantly just take fights that way instead. So we'll see how it does go down, and we'll, um, we'll see, in fact, it does indeed want to do that. As I see Thomas six pick from the castle onto the bandit instead. I like I like just you know, using a six pick from castle. It's always good to kind of put a bit of mystery into what's going on in your lineup. So, Luminosity. ACOGs, two of those, and Heavies, two of those as well. Uh, Fairly standard, Doc would be like the one that you could probably switch out for, I don't know, uh, lacking like a bit more C4 action. Sure, there's the Bandit who can carry the C4, but perhaps like a Mozzie who's really strong on Villa, uh, a really big operator that uh, finds like kind of the versatile like in everything, you know, Jack of all spades, master and none kind of thing. Mm, yeah, that's true, that's true. There, there is a lack of C4 action. I know you love your C4s, and yeah. this is kind of a nitro-heavy meta, so I definitely agree with that. But you look at the verticality destruction yeah. of the wooden floor. But we do have plenty of plant denial here. We do have two Echo Drones up, and we do have smokes coming out from Doodle, as well as that one C4 coming out from Thomas. But we'll look at Disrupt and what exactly they want to do here. Villa is really winning the attack, really, because defense is very easy on this map. The, the two kind of core sites are probably the most defender side of core sites in the entire game. The uh, Sagittary Room and Aviator Room, very, very, very hard to attack. So we'll have a look at what Destruct want to do and how they want to attack. But it looks like mostly from a master side kind of take here. Slumbus makes his way onto the 90 window. Yeah, AVG is the bomb site, and generically the way that defenders try and hold this is by the utility of the bandit. And I'm specifically trying to go for the bandit trick to deny access to, you know, the Fermite. Habana, whatever it is, that's his job. Also, a big part is impact tricking, where you would try and destroy the Fermite Oryx Kairos is simply down to an impact grenade. And you can see that they're going to try and open that up. And also, I think it's going to try and go for the C4, which gets tossed out, and it actually hits Reed right on the head. And that's the Thatcher gone, so he could just slap down his bandit charge with really no consequence, because it doesn't look as if there's going to be many options, though, for the strap to actually go below and try and eliminate all of them. Oh, there is the IQ. Well, that, that, yeah, there is that one thing, but uh, yeah, honestly, bandit now just in a great position. Mm. Not good from Yeti there at all, but Spades is able to pick up his entry frag, and Factor is off the board. The Doc eliminated is definitely going to alleviate a lot of pressure here. It's definitely in terms of fragging capability from Luminosity. Spades trying to find some kills from below, but no, it's going to be Thomas who rotates all the way through onto the main stairs. Finds a frag of his own, finds another frag! It's a 3k for Tommy! As he's been able to pick up so many members of Disrupt. Eventually he does get traded, but Tommy's just gone so huge recently on Bandit. 
He's been great at just finding an opening and taking control of the round. And that's exactly what he's done there. And disrupt. Only two players left, Habana and Sophia. So they have opened up one part of the breach, but it is only a prone hole. They can't physically get in there, but still one more set in the back pocket to actually create a, a walkable hole. But as long as Smoke is playing in behind the bar, there is really nothing that Disrupt have to worry about, Ooh. but the quick peek around, and Doodle actually had the shotgun out rather than the SMG, which is curious. But Disrupt now still have to go against two more, one of them being the Echo, but I still think that IQ did get rid of some of them. Not going to be able to find a kill through there. Hyena, but there we go. Does eventually find it. Carnage goes down. Thumbs goes down with him. A luminosity will take the very first round here on Villa, but kind of to be expected there. Great frags coming out from Thomas, but actually almost got away from them there. Yeah, Thomas getting that opening frag just slows down Disrupt a lot more. Both teams... Uh... I, I, well, maybe not Luminosity as much, because they kind of have like people who just turn around and just go off on one. But Disrupt kind of fit under the... If, if something goes wrong on their attacks, they just crumble. We've seen that a lot from their attacks in console, only being able to take one out of the six. So they could try and, you know, perhaps have a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more depth in who they're playing and what roles. Uh, it is a tough one. It's kind of reminded me of what we had from Sonics earlier, which was uh, very much so. You lose that first opening frag, everything just falls apart from there, and it's never never a good sign to have whenever you're going on a very defender-sided map that is Villa. Attackers yeah, you've really got to keep all that utility up that you can, but we'll have a look what Luminosity want to do on the statutory defense, as we'll move over to the other core site. Now, we're kind of expecting Luminosity to take both of these core sites, but what's going to be interesting is where they go for their off-site, which could be the living room or it could be kitchen, and what exactly happens there, but... If Disrupt want to bring this in, it is not enough for them to win the offsite. So they need to win at least one of these core site attacks. They need to start to bring it in there, and you, know, you kind of win this map through the attack, as we kind of mentioned earlier. Looking like, in terms of like drone placements, that it's going to be mostly kind of an aviator side take, but it could really be anywhere at this point. I would think of uh, the lineup here for Disrupt, because they've not brought a Thermite. No, they only just have the Hibana. If that's something they want to go for, which gives them a little more flexibility and isn't as prone to Nitro Cells, which is a massive thing on the vertical game of Villa, and especially if you look towards Trophy Statuary, if you try and go over and open up that triple wall, nine times out of ten, you will be C4'd. Uh, so we kind of see the meta being shifted to entry in towards Kitchen, first of all, and try and eliminate any C4s from there. And also, it kind of adds that layer of depth where that Ash can also, which, which, whenever I say Ash, so that, that's going to be the main Frager who's going to try and enter in. Or Sophia, you know, there's two options there. They can also open up beneath the bandit to disable him from going for the bandit trick, which we know is a pesky thing to deal with. Yeah, so we'll see drones come out in heavy amounts and all across the board now. Just shrugged, trying to get some info on what kind of push they do want to do, but a pretty standard setup coming up from Luminosity across the board so far. Have a look if they need to do anything different in terms of their execute denial, but... Thomas is, has been the kind of star player for me here. He's just been, as you said at last round, like he finds that opening and he just presses into it. He's been able to get so many of those frags, especially on the Bandit. We saw it the last round on Conchilla. We saw it last round here on Villa. Let's have a look at what he continues to do. I mean, playing aggressively around. Also, that statutory door into the bedroom. Disrupt. Just finding their footing to begin with and well there's the ash from below trying to eliminate thomas who's even trying to peek in towards that but hyena and rex and they jump on the old killing train and they do get two kills apiece and now disrupt looking at again another loss there's still roamers towards the north side of the map for luna or the south side should i say and Disrupt have completely stopped. They've lost their hard breach. They can only push in through doorways. And again, it looks to be Luminosity are going to run away with this round as well. Yeah, two big, very, very important frags coming up from Luminosity there. Rexon does not get injured. He's very, very, very low HP. However, it's going to be Tommy. He shuts down that Astro push from Thumbus. And it's all down to Reed and Spades to try and bring this in. In a 2v5, it's going to be a monumental effort from them if they want to do anything. But Spades pushes through onto 90, does get spotted out by the default cam, however, as Reed tries to do his work from the opposite side, does manage to get a frag onto Thomas, so uh, some success, but gets traded out instantly 
And now it's all, of course, down to spades. Diffuser is down on the opposite side of the map, and with only 20 seconds left to go on the clock, this isn't looking doable right now for spades at all. Echo Drone is, of course, going to blast him as well, and he's just going to completely rotate out of there. This looks like a complete round loss for Disrupt, and spades is just going to wait and bait. And potentially, they're just going to talk about it as a team. Save the KD, bro. It's what you want. It's what you want to see. Love to see it. Yeah, it's not just that, but it's also like, you know, now is the time for Eagle to chime in and talk about what they just Operator did wrong there. Like, Luminosity clearly going for, like, expected kind of results there. That is a 2-0. That's the two call sites they've won. Nothing too drastic there, but Disrupt really need to step it up on their attacks if they want to bring in this map. But, you know, we'll, we'll have a look what happens as we go further in. Yeah, this is the make or break round now for Disrupt. I feel as if if they don't win this kitchen, I just think they're going to get swept like 6-0. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a big possibility. They need to make sure they nail this round. They really need to go in hard as fast as they can. Not bring in the buck or a sledge whenever you know it's going to be kitchen, which Attack revolves all around the destructibility from above. Because, you know, that top floor, it's... The amount of angles you can get in towards that A and B bomb site I like is, is stupid. You can essentially kill off everybody in the bomb without actually having to enter into said bomb site. Look at the attack in towards laundry. Very simple, very basic. You open up that double wall, you're in sight, it pushes everybody away. You coordinate that with the vertical game from above, everybody just collapses. Disrupt have been great at doing that on consulate in their opening kind of two minutes. Being able to take upstairs and clear out roamers, they've done a great job. But it's the final minute that has let them down time and time again. If they fix it this time around, they should have no issues. I feel as if this is a much more easier bomb site to attack compared to Garage Consulate. Yeah, um, but potentially, potentially, I mean, this can be held very, very aggressively. And I think this is where Luminosity really shine, right? Where Rex is going for it. They're able to just hold these really long angles. They're able to find early gunfights. They're not allowing Disrupt to hold crossfires. And I think this is honestly a big reason why they're deciding to win right now, because Disrupt are having a big issue setting up crossfires on Villa. And who can blame them? It is a hard map to get open. Straight away, if I'm the attack and I see that entire triple wall open, I don't pick that one bit. Uh, they need to get the drones in first, find out where specifically the angles are, because if you just wide swing into a window, there could be 101 positions a defender could be hiding. You don't know that unless you get the drones in. Yeti, however, will just enter straight in towards walk-in and gets the gadget out. I'm glad to see that him specifically is using the IQ device in a great fashion, being able to try and eliminate whatever he can find through the floorboards. Again, destructibility, everything's wooden, everything's floor bangable. Uh, sometimes we see IQs just kind of get carried away and just try and fragmite. As I say that, there comes the caster's curse. Mm, yeah, Reed's going to be able to pick up the... Refrag, however, onto Rex, and as we see a 4v4 developing here, Doodle still playing up onto the Astro stairs to see what he can do to shut down Reed's approach here. Drones are going to go out into Astro, however, they have not droned out Doodle successfully right now as Reed just pick up Hyena. No refrag coming out from Doodle, who tries to play his life here and decides to retreat, but Factor is about to get flanked here in a few seconds. He gets the kill! He does get the kill onto Reed and shuts that whole thing down. Now it turns into a 3v2, however, as Slumbus traded it out. And Luminosity all of a sudden not looking too good right now. They've lost that upstairs control, but they've wasted a decent two minutes. That's the only thing about going for that aggressive hold. You are very prone to a full five-man kind of attack that comes in every single side. You have a lot of things open up. It's difficult to get kills. The fact that he even managed to get one in that position is phenomenal from Factor. But still, there's three more players to find for Disrupt, and that's down to Doodle and Thomas. See how they can muster up the courage to fight back against Disrupt, because again, this is a pinnacle round. And you can see Disrupt now. They will begin their execute in towards the bomb site. Still have the hard breach. They can move up in towards the double wall. And uh, let's see if LG can try and pull it out of the bag. Yeah, well, Doodle just flying around the kitchen and see what he can do here. Doesn't have any utility left remaining, but still has his trusty UMP to try and make some damage happen. But the pre-fires come down wrongly. They won't be able to find that vertical play kill. Thomas, however, playing up into... Ah, oh, will find the kill! And Natural goes out, but can't find the second just yet. He did bring it into a 2v2, however, Doodle finding his frag all the way from China, and Spades going down, Thomas going down with him, and Luminosity take round of a three, way better play from them there at the end, and wow. 
Sheesh. Completely dismantled them there at the end. And Luminosity take three on. I, yeah, this is not looking forward to the disrupt. I mean, you could see a 6-0 coming through. That is a round they desperately needed to win to keep them in the race. Now it's looking really bad. They desperately need at least two of these next three rounds if they want to consider themselves still in this. Luminosity have completely dismantled them here. It's not even the fact of Luminosity playing, like, exceptional. Disrupt just can't keep it together for the final minute once again. I don't know how this team can fall apart, look so good in their setup, and just run out of steam. It's really disappointing to look at, but fair play to Luminosity. They're exploiting that for all it's worth. And now they get to go for the full rotation again, back up the AVG, ban the trophy, and then back to kitchen again. And now, Disrupt, you are in a horrible position. Yeah, not a great position whatsoever. Let's move through into round number four. And look what's going on, but Disrupt, yeah, in a really, really bad position now. But the, I suppose the advantage they have now is they've seen the first three defenses now from Luminosity. Not only are they going to know where they're going to go, but they're going to know, oh, they're going to have a good idea of how they're going to set it up. Their coach, Ecole, should be able to chime in here and be able to hopefully give a little bit more helpful information moving forward. And we might see a much better Disrupt coming out. Don't forget, Disrupt's defenses on Consulate were looking pretty flawless until Luminosity eventually came in and they stepped it up. They managed to bring two into the round and then they eventually won the map. So don't count them out just yet, but Disrupt, yeah. They need those two rounds if they want to help that Cinderella story move along. AVG set up once again for Luminosity. Pretty basic information being gathered now is Valkyrie's on the table and still have that denial. So they've switched off the dock and instead have brought in the Valkyrie compared to the last time they defended AVG. And Doc didn't really give them a whole lot to kind of play around with. Sure, it was there, but it didn't do a whole lot of damage. And certainly having the Valkyrie that can apply pressure from below with the C4, uh, which is something that they were lacking on a very heavy C4 bomb site, where the only one they had was in Thomas, which was exploited very early on with an opening frag the last time. And having the two for backup definitely could help them. So, lots of drones are going to be coming out across the board here from Disrupt. And seeing what this downstairs does look like last time, this was just an absolute play made by Thomas to just push down the main stairs, get those freebies on the board, and yeah, he did just have it all going for him here. Rexon again going to be on this roam downstairs to stop any kind of early contention coming out from Disrupt in the form of the book vertical play. Echo Drone's actually going to be helping him down here, as will Factor on the Valkyrie. I would like to see a Nomad from Disrupt. If they know they're having issues with these rotations, similar to what they kind of had with Consulate, Nomad is like the ultimate operator for them to choose, but they haven't went for it. I, I feel as if Nomad is one of the best oh. attackers that you can choose against certain teams. And well, Rexon, he will pick up the first frag on the Fumbus. And now, still that menace from below. And the fact that he also is back up from Factor, it's great to see. Uh, something that I feel as if they were kind of lacking on some of their kind of... Some of their attacks even they were kind of lacking from. So even on the defense, it kind of shows correlation to their attacks that they are supporting each other and supporting each other very well as Thomas even gets another one. And now Disrupt. I just, I don't know anymore. I don't know. And he's also going to ban the trick as well. Thomas is just really the man who does everything right now. In fact, uh, runs around below into the library and see what he can do down here, as well as Rexon. Again, still holding on that duo roam right now, but Disrupt looking really bad right now. They do still have their hard reach up. They still have at least one nade up, and also have read up on the IQ as well. So there's definitely still work to be done. It's not impossible of a hill to climb, but there we go, the Nitro goes out, and that's read off the table. Nate is going to go out as well to try and do something behind the bars. Carnage pushes up onto the other side to try and make something happen. Doodle will go down to him, but he's unable to push through any further. And this is 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Yet he scores the headshot onto Thomas, however. That is one of the playmakers dead and managed to bring it into a 2v3. Carnage very low HP, but as I say, the Rickson eliminates him. It's all down to Yeti to try and do everything here, but no, will not be allowed to have it. He'll go down and Luminosity will take round number four and they're looking absolutely flawless and now we see Disrupt they need these next two rounds or else I think we can just say goodbye to Disrupt so 
picture disrupt as a giant cookie, right? Mm -hmm. Massive cookie. And Luminosity have just ate that cookie. What a great visual. That's what's happening right now. Absolutely dismantled, it would seem. But Disrupt, there's still hope for them yet. They need to these next two crucial rounds if they want to bring in Villa. Notoriously a very, very defender-sided map. We'll see the IQ6 be coming up from Reedy again. As we'll go to a Trophy Room and Statutory Room defense. Facts are going to be bringing the Vigil this time, though. I like this from Luminosity, like, again, staying ahead of the mark and trying to change it up a little bit. Attackers need to locate uh, and defuse I don't know if it's going to really like, have a massive impact. You know, it's their vigil isn't generically an operator, which influences the round all too often. Sure, you're invisible to drones, but, like, not fully invisible. They still have an idea where you are. And, and a map which has a lot of kind of long corridors and twisty and turns, and you have a kind of suspicion, and everything kind of floods into, like, a one-way kind of directional motorway traffic thing going on with Villa. Uh, disrupt now. They just have to do something, like anything at all. Their fry game isn't even strong. It's not as if it's been close rounds. Sure, we've seen 4-0 scorelines before, but they've been right down to the wire, 1v1s every single round. Uh, you know, a real, uh, like not a true understanding of how the game's going. This is a true understanding. That 4-0 scoreline means dominance, and that's what Luminosity have exploited. Tommy, we love Tommy. He's, he's sure not big for the boys, isn't he? He definitely has, he definitely has. We do see pretty heavy roam game coming up from Luminosity here around the Aviator side. Not too uncommon, though. And we'll have a look at what that's going to be doing for Disrupt's take, but... Yeah, from Disrupt, it was kind of all over the place last time, and Luminosity were just punishing them instantly as soon as they tried to make any kind of entry into the map. Disrupt not going for the room clear out, which is what they went for previously. Instead, it will be a full master take from them. Trying to play it as basic and as standard. Back to their roots, there's nothing really that is too overly complicated about you know, the ultimate basic push that you can go for, and that is open up the triple wall and try and push in as well as you can. But still a lack of Fermite from Disrupt. It's not something that they've chosen to bring with and i think they're just fearing you know c4 from below but then again if you're going out of your way to cover the kitchen and go downstairs then why wouldn't you bring the fermite if you don't have to fear c4s at that stage hmm. yeah he's going to be pushing in below through the mud room and see what he can do here he of course can have that big presence downstairs and we've seen him frag out before on the book and just bring in that vertical blade. It can be a big danger on this map. We do actually have a Roma up from Luminosity, who's all the way below in the basement. He should be able to do a little bit of work there. Spade's going to be opening for a little bit more of that vertical play, and should be able to take up all of this time to see if there's any harbors now going thrown onto here. But it's also forcing Thomas off that wall, so he can't bring in the bandit trade. There's a big factor in Spade's moving up. Spade goes down, Thomas goes down. And this is huge from Factor to be able to punish everyone downstairs. He gets a triple kill out of it. Yet he's out of it. That may be good night disrupt right now as Reed and Carnage are the last ones remaining. Thumbus and Carnage, however, are going to pick up a kill apiece. And uh, Thumbus doing his post mortem. Damage has been done, though. Everything that disrupt go for with a slow play has literally been lost due to a lack of coverage for the flank. Haha, <laughs> if only there was an operator that could stop people running at you. Oh wait, there is, it's called Nomad. How about you try and pick it up? Disrupt, they will try and pick up the pieces off this round so far as Carnage will try and move on in towards the AVG side of things. And well, Reed, he's downstairs trying to assist him towards Red. But this has completely bottlenecked him into only one option and there's still the smoke on the board. And I wonder if Thomas still has that lucky C4 in his back pocket. Another one being tossed in by the smoke and, well, Luminosity. They have locked it out and disrupt. They have no idea what they want to do. They just oh. roll in and have managed to eliminate Thomas and a double for Reed and the plant has been stuck. But there's Doodle and should be able to stop the plant. I hope he stops the plant as he swings all around and sees their banner. That's a clean up job from Doodle. And the man who's named after a rock makes it work. <laughs> Yeah, very, very well played indeed. Coming up from Doodle there at the end to clutch the 1v2 and bring it in for Luminosity. And this just seems good night disrupt rain all over it. Their villa attacks have been just straight up 
awful. They cannot find any kind of... Do we of want some GM in here in DG uh, in chat? Well, not quite yet. Not quite yet. They've still got one round of the attack to bring it in. I think this is a 6-0. I just do not see it being a clean sweep the other way. We could see Luminosity now be the worst attacking Villa team in the world, which I think is very possible, yeah. but... They could choke, you know, NAN choking, that's a common occurrence. It, it is a common occurrence, it's true. But I just don't see a situation here where you see a 5-0 or you see a 6-0 for Luminosity and you see Disrupt bring it back. It's going to be a big uphill battle for them. I think they really needed to win Consulate to bring this through, but really, on paper, this is a great map for Disrupt, and it seems confusing why they are dropping this right now. Defenders, protect your Just think of the attacks in general for Disrupt have been really underwhelming. Only one attack out of, what's that, 11 attacking rounds on Villa and Consulate combined. Only one of those has been an attack win for Disrupt. Everything else has just been defend side at four, Luminosity. Still, there is that hope where we see the kind of split across Disrupt then get the defense. Likelihood of that is very unlikely, uh, extremely unlikely. They just have to try and do whatever they can. Uh, it's, it's just looking Luminosity all the way. Five seconds left. So we will see again this 90 cam is going to be coming out. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen its appearance come through. But this one's going to be Hyena, who's going to be playing up on the dock as we've gone downstairs to the offside. Now, this was actually still pretty close. Disrupt had a good chance to bring this in, but ultimately did get shut down by the double UMP combo. But we'll have a look at what this is going to be entailing as Luminosity again with a very, very similar setup with this whole triple wall opened up yet again. Just wonder how many people on their brand spanking new strafe app put. Because of course, strafe gives you everything you need to know about the matches, and of course you can play it, play along at home and predict who's going to win what map. James, who do you think? What, what do you say in your strafe app? I said disrupt in my strafe app actually, so this isn't looking too good for wow. me in my points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not shocked that you got it wrong, James. I'm really uh, not. Wow, okay, thank you. Thank you. You need to have faith in Tommy and the boys. Mm, and, apparently. well, the Shrap, they do get one back, but still, Luminosity, they've took out the IQ and Rex, and now he's probably feeling a little bit safer knowing that, oh, yeah, my goo mines are up to stay. Uh, only one C4 for Luminosity, and that's on Thomas. He's been great, though, with his kind of C4s, hasn't he, so far this game? He's hit, like, what, maybe two, I think? Ooh. Well, that's going to be Rex and picks up one of his own. Reed does go down, and yeah, this is looking like a complete good night to Disrupt, but a 3v4 has developed. Disrupt still could bring this in. They decent, have a decent amount of utility. They have brought that Nomad, but unfortunately is going to be eliminated before she could really do much here to stop Luminosity's movement. Still 4v3, and uh, Luminosity still have a lot of control of the map, but Disrupt have gained up that top stairs control, and they have a lot of soft destruction as well to bring it to bear. Oh, Disrupt. Where do we go from here? A minute to go. No hard breach that is in a great position to really utilize the kind of walls that there is in. You know, Carnage, he's just kind of like lurking around towards the top floor. Actually trying to take the frags. Like, like sure, he's outside laundry, but he's not really doing anything. He cannot push in there without that top floor being on lock. It's, ah. Uh, it's a real tough one to kind of have. And like, not, like, sure, Fumbus is here. But what's to stop Luminosity just rotating above? Absolutely nothing at all. There's no flank coverage. Nomad got eliminated. It's just looking grimmer by the minute. Mm. Carnage has managed to find his way into laundry. However, he should be able to get this open sooner rather than later. Thomas taking quite a few hits there from Thumbus upstairs, but unable to find the frag just yet. And only 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Nitro will go out, but he unfortunately will miss. And Spade's still holding above, but Thumbus is going to drop down. And so is Spade actually to try and push the site. They've really got to get some aggressive control here if they want to stand a chance of making this work. Thomas is going to ping it out, but oh, he's going to get a kill. And Rexon gets one as well, gets instantly traded by Carnage, but oh, another one for Carnage brings up the pistol, but can't find his third as Luminosity take round number six as a clean 6 0 flawless defense from them. All they have to do is find one round on their attack and they bring in this series and push through into the quarterfinals. GN DG. That's all I can say. Oh, I don't know, man. It has been. A real struggle to see Disrupt who had 
honestly, a, an absolute blinder of a match in their consulate fall a lot in their attacks. Not getting a single one on Villa. Even both of the tier sherry bomb sites for luminosity worked for them. Not a single attack in sight, and now we're asking nothing short of a miracle. I know it's getting towards Christmas time, and they need an <laughs> early one to come. Well, we've got Halloween before then, don't we? Well, they need some kind of spooky nightmare to happen mm, to Luminosity. Sure. It's going to be in the aviator room and games room defense coming out from Disrupt. It's not looking good, but honestly, I feel like this is doable. Like the clean sweep, reverse sweep coming out from Disrupt here. It's definitely possible to bring this into overtime. And I believe they get to choose what side they start in overtime as well, since uh, they picked the map. So, you know, if they choose defense and they had a clean 6-0, I mean, this is really possible for Disrupt to actually bring this in. It, it's, a, it's a tall challenge, it's a tough one. The momentum swung away from them, but I think it's doable. You and Fluke are a little bit insane, aren't you? You a guys are, are still a little bit. You guys are very optimistic. I don't know why. I think, you know, it's just our duality, right? You know? <laughs> the world could be ending and you guys could still yeah. try and find something good out of that. Well, you know, if the world's ending, then there'd be no more crime, so. Oh my word. Gotta see, you know, the bright side of life, but. Just, just enough. <laughs> Moving into round number seven. It's good to disrupt to start out with their very first defense with a very heavy roam downstairs, it would look like. Bomb located by yeah, attacker. full extension towards the living yeah. room, which is similar to what Luminosity did mm -hmm. on their AVG. It did work a charm. You had their Jaeger downstairs fragging out of his skull, and, well, they are in. Oh they my ran God. to the mid four hold, and they said, you know what, guys? We're just going to take the site from you. Thanks. Come again. You're going to get 7-0. Disrupt now. All to do it. Spades and Yeti nowhere near retaking the bomb site, and Luminosity, well, they have officially said good night, Disrupt gaming and Rexon who has rampaged on Yeti another one but all in vain at what oh. cost sure there's another one James but that doesn't matter there's still two more for him to go through and has to get the defuse down halfway is how the counters went and Luminosity they have ran away with Villa oh, sure there's on. another one he should not win this I have faith in Doodle the man they call Cole C-O-A-L oh. by the way Yeti, smoke get tossed out, but not enough time. A valiant effort to go out in a burning blaze of glory. But Luminosity, 7-0 <laughs> disrupt, and they take the series two maps to zero. I've never seen a better effort from Yeti. A yep. complete, almost ace clutch there from him, but it wasn't meant to be, and Luminosity will take the map flawlessly well done from them. Just absolute complete domination coming out from them. It would seem Luminosity just completely rolled over Disrupt on their map pick as well. That was Disrupt's map pick. They wanted to go there. Oh, they just got in the grinder, meat grinder. Yeah, absolutely yeah. turned around. And yeah, what more can you say? Luminosity, just their defense. Honestly, their defense didn't even look that strong. Disrupt in their attacks were really weak. That final minute has really let them down. That final push into the bomb site. Yeah, it definitely did. And uh, it's an, it's unfortunate as well, like coming out from Disrupt. I really thought that like, going into this matchup, they'd ever be able to give like a good, uh, strong matchup. Uh -huh. And uh, I think at the start, we we really thought, oh, wow, Disrupt. With yeah, four they, they defenses the on punch, yeah. they were bringing the fire. But after that, we just didn't see anything from them coming out. They just got completely rolled over and... Yeah, well, that's going to push Luminosity Gaming into the quarterfinals, and that's definitely a very important matchup for yep. them. Yeah, so let's bring up the bracket. We'll have a look to see now where everything kind of unfolds with that. You know, we've seen, of course, our first map this evening. It was Sonics. They beat Orgless 2-1 and just Luminosity. They have swept the side Disrupt. That leaves us with one more match tonight, James. Rise versus Drac. Yeah, kind of the most unknown matchup of the night because we haven't seen too much from Drac. They came through the open qualifier. And, uh, well, of course, we know a lot about Rise. Yep. Challenger League team very much on the rise as well. As, you know, they've been, doing, they've been doing okay through the CL season. They are definitely threatening that second place spot still as mm -hmm. well. 
So they could be able to push through themselves into relegations. They face a cat ski in their final play day yes, as well in NA Challenger League. So yeah, could be very good for them. But we're going to see them coming up next. Rise versus Drac. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android. 